Hello and welcome to Long Verticals and Diagonals, another great webcast from Schwab Coaching. My name is Ben Watson and I'm an education coach and senior manager here at Charles Schwab. I'm joined in the chat today by Ken Rose, my good friend and 20 plus year veteran of the financial markets. He's going to be there to help answer your questions along the way. Thanks to all of you for joining me. And uh, we're going to focus on a little spring cleaning today. We're going to do uh, some maintenance and management of some of the trades, uh, trade examples that we have discussed over the last few weeks. So we'll see how those play themselves out as we get closer to, or maybe in some cases not quite so close to expiration. Now, as we do that, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Remember, everything that we talk about simply for illustrative and educational purposes only shouldn't be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular strategy, chart pattern, or security. Remember that options carry a high level of risk. They're not suitable for all investors. Make sure that you understand the characteristics and risks of standardized options before you trade any option strategy. We're gonna talk a little bit of technical analysis in this discussion. That's not the only way, it's theoretical. There are other ways to evaluate the market. Therefore, Schwab doesn't recommend the use of technical analysis as the sole means of investment research. We're gonna be focusing on the Thinkorswim paper money version of the desktop software platform today. It's for educational purposes only. It's a great learning environment. However, it does not do a couple of things. One, it does not facilitate the early assignment of short options. And that's gonna be important, especially as you move your practice from paper trading to live money that's something to pay attention to. And I've got an example of why that is uh, something that you need to pay attention to uh, in our discussion today. Now, remember that investing involves risk, including the loss of principal. Spread trading must be done in a margin account. And multiple leg option strategies can entail substantial transaction costs. Remember, the past performance of any security or strategy does not guarantee future results or success. So in terms of a general agenda of where we're headed, we're going to talk about some long vertical and diagonal strategies, some that we have already primarily focused on those that we have already placed and adjusted and evaluated here in this long verticals and diagonals webcast on previous days. Uh, we're going to discuss the impact of price, time, and volatility. We're going to see that come home to roost. And we're going to, in some cases, place example trades to manage some of these existing positions. So I'm gonna jump out to uh, the, the Thinkorswim desktop software platform. While I'm doing that, one, I'm gonna remind you, you've got Ken Rose, a phenomenal resource uh, out there in the chat to be able to ask questions. Ken Rose teaches a number of webcasts, including one uh, that is absolutely phenomenal if you have not been to it. And if you're interested in taking the discussion of ThinkScript to the next level. Ken Rose on Fridays teaches a ThinkScript webcast where he breaks down that ThinkScript programming language. And, and I'll tell you what, I've taught that a couple of times and have felt the pressure to match up to uh, the level that Ken brings to that discussion. So I'm gonna pop over here to the ThinkorSwim platform. The second thing I'm gonna remind, remind you of as we go into this transition to the ThinkorSwim desktop software platform, is this great time to click on subscribe uh, there at the bottom of your screen if you've not done so already it gives you the opportunity to set up notifications whether we post a new webcast whether we're going live whether we're posting a recording you can set up those notifications it also helps you to organize and keep all of your information handy uh, here in the trader talks uh, webcast channel and it is no cost to you to subscribe not like some of those other streaming services out there. And uh, so good opportunity to do that. Click on that button if you've not done so already. Now, as we jump in to our discussion, I've got a number of positions. Now, I, I noticed a couple of people had asked me questions, and this is actually as a result of a number of questions that have come up in feedback surveys and so forth. Um, I had I was out teaching last week out in the field uh, I was in uh, Tampa and then Sarasota, or actually Sarasota and then Tampa, and then Atlanta. Some of you were probably there uh, in our big Atlanta event, uh, our two-day workshop. Uh, so I had someone cover for me 
last week, and I think it may have been Brent Moore's covering for me uh, in that webcast. It may have been Barbara. So I don't have the the uh, trades that were put on last week. I have the trades that we've been discussing over the last couple of weeks. So we'll evaluate those. They'll teach, talk about and, and teach some of the ideas about managing long verticals and diagonals. We'll talk about that as we go along. But first, let's kind of get centered as far as what's going on in the market as a whole. Taking a look at the S&P 500, we saw that little bit of a bull flag type of pattern banging its head against the resistance here, in this case, right around the 52-55 range as a potential resistance area. The NASDAQ really kind of going sideways today. A little bit more wait and see. Here we are on the last trading day of the quarter. The market is closed tomorrow. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are dark for webcasts, meaning none of our none of the live webcasts that normally happen on Friday will be broadcast tomorrow. Uh, but you can watch, obviously, the recorded versions, the uh, Trader Talks webcast channel on YouTube available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch those recorded versions. The Russell 2000 uh, continuing this breakout above the resistance level and, in fact, breaking above that 2115 resistance now notching 2127. So a little bit of strength in the small caps, but uh, kind of some pause uh, in the momentum and that movement price-wise in the other two broad market indices. So kind of seeing a pause moment. However, however, there has still been, since the last time we taught this, the last time that I taught this class, there's been a little bit of bullishness. In fact, we were looking at kind of banging our heads into that resistance at the 5170 mark, and then we saw that breakout and then the rally through. And so there has been some pretty solid bullishness. Uh, that being said, many of the trade examples that we were looking at were either counter trend trades in a couple of cases, a couple of cases looking for price maybe holding at some of these resistance levels, or just straight up bullish directional trades in terms of some of these long vertical spreads, uh, which potentially may have benefited from this recent bullishness. So let's just kind of really quickly, uh, as we jump over back over to the monitor tab, kind of review the idea behind long vertical spreads as directional trades, right? The expectation is in a long vertical spread, perhaps even more so, then a short vertical spread, because the objective is that both legs of the vertical spread moves move to the in the money position to achieve theoretical maximum gain, that there is some directional price movement. And we've talked in previous webcasts about the idea of making uh, a long vertical spread either more directional or less directional based on strike price selection. We've talked about uh, duration of that long vertical spread. We've talked about the idea of splitting the expiration dates and turning a long vertical spread into a long diagonal spread. In fact, even in one case here, we've got a long double diagonal spread that we'll manage today. And in most cases, you can see that the, the if we sort this list, not alphabetically the way it is sorted currently, but we sort this list according to PL open. We'll put the ones that are losing money on top and just kind of the presumption that those are the ones that perhaps we need to pay more attention to, first of all, are the ones that are going against us. But you can see that the majority of those trades have generally been uh, directionally beneficial, right? Uh, and they've worked for the most part in our favor. And again, that is not in any way, shape, or form a recommendation of these specific securities. It is not a recommendation of the strategy because there is the potential to, and there's that significant possibility of loss in the trade. Now, that's one of the reasons why we talk through these ideas. So let's manage the one that is working against us first, and then we'll kind of work our way down through this list from uh, biggest loss to uh, biggest gain, at least at this particular point. So we'll take this uh, micro strategy trade first. And this is a long put 
vertical. And I believe, if I remember correctly, this is one that we were looking at as a counter trend trade. In order to evaluate that without notes, let's take a look at the chart for uh, MSTR, not Monster, but MSTR MicroStrategy, and see what the expectation was. Because I think, if I remember correctly, uh, that this was a counter trend trade. Uh, looking at taking advantage of possible downside, slight, slight downside movement. Greg reminds me that it was Barb that taught. So I tell you what, I, I will do this for you, Barb, or Greg. I will get with Barb, get the details on those trades, and we'll manage those going into next week, into next Thursday's uh, Long Verticals and Diagonals uh, webcast. So stick with me on that one. So let's go to the chart here for MSTR. I'm going to change my chart grid to my single grid. And we'll pop over here to MSTR, MicroStrategy. And uh, I think this was one in which we were looking at uh, taking that counter trend move, and it seems to have moved against us. So let's go back once again to the, the monitor tab, and let's get a sense of what the circumstances are on this particular trade. I'm going to move my little divider box over a little bit so that I can see what this is. And this was a 1,700 long put option, 1,600 short put. So the expectation being here, because this is a long put vertical spread, that the price of the underlying stock would move to or below that 1,600 level, the short put option, and put both of these options in the money. Now, the current mark price for micro strategy, and there's a fair amount of volatility here, because you can see this moving around. In fact, in, in today's movement, it's down about 230 points. It's now notching right around that 1684 level. So let's take a look at the chart and let's kind of draw this out. Nice even numbers, 100 point wide vertical spread here um, in that put spread. So we are short the 1600. So let's draw that level in here. And we are long the 1700. Okay. So we are long the 1700. And I'll just kind of draw that in right here. So we're kind of at that point where our expectation was originally, as price was moving down, that it was going to continue to make that move to the downside. What's happened is that the trade has gone against us in that price has moved up and through both legs of this vertical spread put that vertical spread out of the money. So in, in this particular case, as we look at this, when price was up in this area right here, right, both legs of that vertical spread were out of the money. But the, the, long, put vert, the long put at 1,700 and the short put at 1,600. It's just now kind of ticking below that 17, so putting the 1700 put in in the money position. So now we kind of have to make an assessment here. And, and the first kind of uh, assessment metric that we have to look at is what's the expectation directionally on the price of this stock? Do, is the expectation that we see further downward movement? Is the expectation that we see a bounce up off of this level of support? Is there enough time in the initial trade to allow the scenario to play itself out? This is the risk of playing a counter trend type of uh, directional strategy, especially on a volatile stock. The stock can, and in this case has, made some pretty significant moves against us. So let's go back to the trade and take a look. 15 days to go until expiration, which is not a lot of time. Right, and so we paid initially for the trade sixty-two dollars per share times a hundred shares, sixty-two fifteen. It's currently trading for fifty-five. It's kind of oscillating back and forth between fifty-three to fifty-five dollars a share. So, given the length of time in between uh, now and expiration, there is the potential. I, I like that. So, AJ says, "Large engulfing candle, let it ride." All right, I'm going to throw it out to you. I, I, I honestly want to get a sense here of what the, the perceptions are. So AJ says, 
large engulfing candle, let it ride. Let's see if we get more downside movement. Does anyone want to disagree? We're not necessarily crowdsourcing every decision, but I want to get a sense of what your thought process is uh, in this mix. Because remember, this was a counter trend trade to begin with. So the expectation was it could significantly go against us. We look back at that chart. And in fact, it's even going against us just as we're talking. Or actually, it's going in our direction as we're talking. So Debbie says, green with AJ, let it ride. Anybody else? Big engulfing candle. Little bit of buying pressure coming in here. So the, the question might be, well, what else could we do with it, right? Paul says, go for it. All right, fair enough. We were willing to take that risk. If we take, go back to the trade, we, we were willing to take that risk, right? We were willing to put that trade in. So now if we think about this, what if we were to do this? Because we're almost back to even. What if at the very least, now oftentimes some traders may not put stops on an already risk-defined trade, right? Meaning we know that the initial risk in this trade was 6215 times 100 shares. That's theoretically the maximum loss. So planning position size around that uh, maximum theoretical loss is generally the, the, the thought process in a long vertical spread. But what if we were to do this in, in this particular case, given the fact that there is potentially some bearishness here uh, in the stock, what if we were to right click and create a closing order that says, let's sell this back. Let's sell this back on a stop. And remember that stop orders, not a guarantee of the, uh, of the execution price, we know what our activation price might be, but certainly in the case of a volatile option, no guarantee of what the act, uh, what the uh, actual fill price might be. So what if we were to say, all right, I'm willing to risk not a whole lot necessarily in this particular trade. We're going to take it off if it really starts to go against us. But we paid 63 to begin with. What if we were to say, all right, I'm willing to risk um, 13 in the trade. So what if we were to say, if this trades at 50 or below, and we'll make that good till canceled, then we'll close down the spread and eliminate that uh, that trade, right? So in, in that particular case, we'll click on confirm and send. We'll read through this order, make sure that we're aware of the risks of this being a stop and the fact that it may be worked until it gets filled simply to manage that potential for a stop to trade and, and fill at a wildly different price than the activation price. So the expectation is here potentially losing less than our theoretical maximum loss in the trade to begin with. So be aware of the risks of, uh, of stop orders. Make sure that you understand those characteristics. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to send that off as a working order. So we're going to go back here to the monitor tab and we can see that we've got an order in place. And so that allows, in this case, the trade to continue to work. And one of the other things that then we're going to want to potentially do is, is look at this next week and see where we are. We'll be now seven days closer to expiration. So we'll be almost down to that 10 days to go until expiration. That'll give us a sense of whether we simply take the trade off at that point or we leave that trade uh, working. So that's micro strategy in this particular case, a counter trend directional trade. So you notice that the loss has gone from 900 when we started talking to about 400. This is an indication of some of the volatility of this particular underlying stock. So one of the things to think about in stock selection is that level of volatility, uh, you know, and, and whether or not your risk tolerance allows for trading that level of volatility. So MU, I think, was another one, another counter trend trade. We paid uh, five. So I'm sorry, we paid 210 for it. Let's take a look at the chart here for MU. 
And <laughs> we were looking at trading that as it moved, bounced down from this resistance level. What did it do on the earnings announcement? It blew up through our resistance level. We go back to the monitor tab here and we're at expiration. It's essentially worthless. So we took that chance on the counter trend trade and the counter trend trade uh, put both of those legs. So we were long the 88, short the 84. The price of the stock now is 118. So our counter trend trade in this particular case did not work. We ended up in this case taking that theoretical maximum loss. Now here's the thing. We could let this go through, to, through expiration. We've got the rest of the day to go and the stock could potentially move, there could be a bid. But if we right-click and we create a closing order, what we see is that right now there is no bid uh, for this, this option. So theoretically, we would just let this expire worthless. Now, one thing to think about, however, and, and this is one of those uh, considerations when looking at trades, uh, if, if you're going to hold on to a trade, um, into uh, expiration, right? And and simply say, all right, fine. I've taken the theoretical maximum loss. I'm not going to close this trade down prior to expiration. I'm going to let this expire worthless. Here's the possibility. Is there still the chance, right? Is there ch still the chance that the price of this underlying stock could move and put one of those legs in a position where there's the possibility of assignment? And the answer to that is, yeah, unfortunately, there is still that possibility, at least on the short leg, right? I mean, there's that possibility of assignment. So if we pop out here to all, you can see how far out we are with that short leg, right? That's way out here at the 84 strike. So the stock would have to make a pretty big move in order for that scenario to occur. One of the considerations, however, might very well be uh, looking at buying this back and eliminating the obligation, at least on the short leg, right? Even if we don't close the vertical spread down as a whole, one consideration might be closing the short leg positively, eliminating that risk of price movement or assignment so that it just doesn't, it, it's just not something that has to be worried about. And let's see if we can, in fact, uh, get that to to work here. So we're willing to sacrifice this dollar in this trade essentially to close this down in a positive fashion and click on send and fire that order off. That may not fill, but at least we have made the attempt in this particular case to close that leg down, at least the short leg down. And that's generally a good consideration, I think, whenever you're talking about an option or a multiple leg option strategy that has short legs involved with it. If you're going to consider holding the trade through expiration uh, or or very close to expiration, consider at the least closing down the short leg to eliminate the obligation that exists, even as you go into that expiration, is something to think about in terms of managing your risk. Now, that order may not fill. Uh, to buy back that short leg. So something that we might even pop back up here and kind of nudge a little bit. Uh, if we cancel and replace and we open that lock and we give it a little bit, maybe we're willing to pay a couple of cents to close it down. We click on confirm and send, review the order, make sure that we're aware of any alerts here, and we'll fire that order off and see if we're willing, if, that, if anybody's willing to close that trade down. It may very well be that it just expires uh, worthless in this particular case, but it's a good mental thought process uh, to get in the habit of closing short legs prior to expiration. All right, so now we're starting to look at the trades that have gone in our direction, that have actually worked uh, a little bit for us. So here's Abercrombie and Fitch, and this was a long put vertical spread. We bought it for 290 currently trading at 295. Let's go to the chart here for ANF. And again, this was one of our 
Um, and, and AJ asked a question, should we have maybe closed that short leg earlier? Probably so. The, this is Okay, so this is, I think, a good illustration, AJ, and I think I'm glad that you asked that question because it's, it's one of those questions that comes up, right? It, it's one of those questions that comes up. Should we close the trade down prior to expiration? And it illustrates the fact that we're not able to get that trade to fill. You think, wow, okay, I'll just hold it till the last day. I'll be able to close it down. It'll be fine. Not a problem. But in, in a case like, like we just looked at with that uh, MU trade, the stock's moved. The market has moved off of that. There's not a lot of activity going on there. And the market makers are going to be not kind necessarily to those trying to get out of especially short legs uh, in in that particular circumstance. So you may end up paying more. You may look at, you know, a wider bid ask spread, a little bit more slippage. And, and so it's something to pay attention to and perhaps look at closing a trade down prior to expiration in a positive fashion. Uh, so Walton asked the question, what does opening the lock on a cancer place do versus leaving it? Opening that lock allows that bid ask spread to, or the, the price that you're, you've got put in that order to float to wherever the market is currently, to wherever that market price is. So when we went to that trade and, and I opened up the lock, let me go to my, uh, so we go back to that MU trade and we go to our working orders and I right click and do cancel replace. If I open up this lock, then I'm gonna let that price float back to the current mark price. So I'm gonna add a little bit to that again, like we did before click on confirm and send, read through the order and send, and we'll see if we can get that filled. There just may not be any open interest and activity and volume going on at that particular strike price uh, right now so that that order doesn't get filled. It may not get filled, right? So something to be aware of. So we'll close that one down. We're taking a look now at this Abercrombie and Fitch. And again, let's go back to the chart for ANF. Whoops, wrong, <laughs> wrong keyboard. Pop over here. So we had looked at trading this in, as a counter trend trade with that price moving down from that kind of double top pattern. We see a little bit of a bullish engulfing candle today, uh, but we look at the trade and we've got about 15 days to go until expiration, kind of like the same scenario that we were looking at with that micro strategy trade. So about two weeks, a little over two weeks to go until expiration here. The trade is working in our favor. Um, the the circumstances are we are short the 125 put long the 130 put so let's draw those in here so we're short the 125 and we're banging the price is kind of banging its head right back up on that 125 and we are long the 130 so there's kind of our expectation and i think we were looking at doing this as it was coming down off of that first little run to the upside and kind of breaking down through that support level so now this, this bullish engulfing candle kind of knocking its head up against the, the short strike here. I, I'm going to throw this one back at you guys again, because here we are in kind of the same scenario. Price is moving a little bit higher, so counter to the direction that we want to go in this trade. But now we've got 15 days to go until expiration. We're slightly positive. We could close down the trade with a small win at this particular case, theoretically, right? Uh, or... Another scenario would be leaving that trade on to see if price bangs against that resistance and moves to the downside. We've had one slightly lower high in this double top. We might look at this as that, uh, that complex of rally up, pull back, rally up, pull back, but it's at a slightly higher low. So this presents one of those kind of complex scenarios here, right? So Paul says kind of in opposition to what we were looking at uh, in our uh micro strategy trade looking at taking the small win and and i think that's kind of an interesting perspective right um from from this scenario because theoretically if we think about this the loss if we go back to the monitor tab if we were to not take that small potential gain here the theoretical maximum loss that we could take in this particular case um would be that two dollar ninety cent theoretical maximum loss, right? What we paid for the trade. $2.90 can wipe out a lot of nickel wins, correct? But, you know, we, we we kind of have this scenario here where it's it's going against us. We're at the point where we could make that 
a, a little bit better. So 10 cents now, right? Yeah, so so C Bravo asks the question, with these counter trend trades, do we look for a specific percentage return or are exits more on a technical breakdown? And I think uh, the answer to that question is yes, both, because what we didn't do is put in profit targets on these trades. Sometimes we'll do that. Don't let a green trade go red. I think there's a song in there somewhere, right, Paul? Don't let a green, don't you make my green trades go red. Anyway. So, yeah, I, I, I think it kind of works in both senses here. If we had set up a particular profit target on the trade or potential exit on the trade, if it was going for us, that might be one thing. Trying to do that now maybe is, you know, closing the barn door after um, after the, the horse has gotten out here. So now we're looking at this in this technical breakout, and it's going, starting to go against us. I kind of fall in the, in the, the camp of of maybe looking at taking that trade off. Now, Jerry asks a very interesting question. Does rolling offer any benefit? That's a really good question because realistically, think about this. And this is a good, a good thought process to work our way through. Look at where price is, right? Price is at 124.96. Essentially, it is almost at our uh, short strike. That means that the at the money strike if we were to roll this out to a further uh, expiration, to a, a, a later expiration, the at the money strike is almost always going to be the strike that has the greatest amount of extrinsic value. So is there, there is the potential to roll with this price, with the price of the stock in the at the money position uh, at, at our, our short leg, to roll this for a credit and, and potentially put the trade into... Uh, a, a better situation. Now, that being said, one of the considerations in rolling would be, does this trade make sense from a directional standpoint still? You think about roll as initiating a new trade, right? Because all it is is closing down the previous trade and then starting a new one. Now we're kind of in that position of saying, is this something that I would do now uh, if I were starting the trade in, in this particular point? So let's just examine that really quickly and see what that looks like. If we were to right click and create a rolling order and we were to just roll it out expiration to expiration instead of changing strike prices, could we roll it out? And we're essentially rolling it out at, uh, at flat even. If we were to roll it out maybe a little bit further out in time, uh, maybe we roll out to the 26th April, we're getting a little bit of credit, but I'll tell you what, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem to be a really attractive role, even in the at the money position. So I'm going to look at managing this trade by closing it at this particular point. We'll take the trade off and uh, we'll see if we can get at least 295 for it. Click on confirm and send again. Remember, this is for illustrative and educational purposes only, making sure that we're aware of the trade. We're going to read through any alerts and orders here and we're going to fire that order off. And we got 305. So we got 15 cents. Uh, net for this trade in closing that trade down on ANF. All right, IBM, and this is one we've got 50 days to go until expiration. We've got zero days to go in our short legs. I'm going to go to the analyze tab really quickly here and we'll throw on IBM because I don't want to spend too long analyzing this, but I want to kind of think uh, about this idea. This is a double diagonal. Right, So we've got a long call diagonal, we've got a long put diagonal, we've got a space in the middle in which we see theoretical maximum gain. It's got these little peaks. And I'll tell you what, Ken Rose has taught, I know Ken Rose has taught a couple of really great webcasts on double diagonals if you go back and you search through the archives. But here's the price of our stock. It's kind of right on that edge at this point. So this is a scenario where if we go back to our monitor tab, we can see that we're up just a little bit on the trade where we could potentially roll those insides, the short legs out. We still have 50 days to go in our long legs, in our long call and our long put. So we might right click, create a rolling order. And now remember what we're going to do is we're going to buy back the two short legs and we're going to sell uh, those two 
uh, those two short legs out further in time. So what we might then in this particular case do is we're going to buy back those two short legs and we're going to sell the two put the two short legs. So we might create another roll here. So that's buying back the two that we're short that have no days to go until expiration and selling and we're doing it for a buck 41 credit. So we're going to click on confirm and send. And now what we're doing, if we do this, is we're extending this trade forward. We still have time in the long legs, the diagonals, and we're doing it for a credit. So we're going to read through this. And again, remember, rolls are not magic. They require a liquid market in the destination, expiration, and strikes. We're going to click on send, and we'll see if that order fills, and we'll see if that can move to that longer dated uh, expiration on those two short legs. And we'll still have to deal with it eight days to go from then. Now, let's take a look at this one. This is this is Celsius. This one is going in our favor, 15 days to go until expiration. This is a counter trend trade. Celsius has pulled back a little bit. I'm not even gonna look at the chart because I know the scenario here. If we take a look at this scenario, uh, our maximum theoretical gain on the trade was six bucks. We're almost at that maximum theoretical gain on this trade. With 15 days to go, it doesn't make a lot of sense to hang on to $3.40 of risk to pick up another uh, 20 cents of potential gain. So right click, create closing order, and we're gonna sell this one back. Now there are our uh, monster trade rolled for us uh, and close this out. And now we're gonna create this order to sell back our Celsius vertical. Click on confirm and send read through the order, make sure that it's what we want, click on send and fire that order off and close that and try to take that uh, majority of the of the profit that we made in that particular trade. The next one that I'm going to come down to, just in the interest of time, and we'll give us ourselves something to look at continuing on, is uh, these DR Horton long call diagonals, right? So we did two of these. We did a 120, 165 long call, and we did a 100, 160 long call diagonal, both going out to those leaps options, right? So we've got a leaps option that it's, or an option, a short leg that's expiring in eight days. We've got a short leg that's expiring in 15 days. Now, notice something. The long leg has profited because this, one that is expiring in eight days, even though that 160 call is now in the money, that long leg, the 100 call, has made some money for us in this particular case, right? So theoretically, the scenario that we might consider in this case is rolling the, uh, is rolling this short call, the 160 call, and keeping that going. It's at the $5.35 range. If we were to buy it back, we could eliminate that call option. We're going to try to roll that. Maybe we roll it up to the 165 strike. Now, notice the 165 strike, 15 days. There goes our, our Celsius. We exited the Celsius trade. In this particular case, we've got two long diagonals, both directional, both going in the same direction. I'm going to pay attention to this one first. It's the one that is slightly working in our favor. And I might, in this particular case, we've got 295 days to go on that leaps option is simply at this point, let's look at the chart for DHI. DHI is continuing to move to the upside. In this particular case, given the way that that has been moving, one of the things that we might consider doing, this gives us an opportunity to kind of practice this, would be to close just the short leg and allow that long leg to continue to move, okay? To allow that long leg to continue to move um, without the cover of the short call option in this particular case. So let's create that order to close down just the short leg in this first one that we've got, we're gonna click on confirm and send. We're gonna pay a little bit to buy that back. We wanna read through that order, make sure that we're aware of it. We're gonna pay a little bit, but what we're doing in that particular case then is opening up, we look at the chart, stock's making a directional move, 
opening up the stock to make that directional move and, and move higher. All right. So let's go to the last one here uh, in our discussion. And uh, James asked a great question when we were looking at um, when we were looking at managing that IBM double diagonal. Why not roll the calls and put separately? You could certainly do that. You absolutely could certainly do that, and it may in fact result in um, a quicker fill. But one of the things to think about in terms of making that roll is that it, it was nice and convenient to be able to put all of those together. And so that's one of the factors that maybe cons makes people consider rolling because it is a convenient order. So we created that order to buy back the short call, buy back the short put, sell a short call, sell a short put into that future expiration, all in the same trade. Doesn't save you on commissions or transaction costs or anything else. It simply makes it more efficient to accomplish that. So we could do that. We could roll them individually if, you want, if we wanted to. The other thing to think about is maybe just doing that in a time efficient manner as well. So the last one I'm going to look at here is this zebra trade, uh, which is a zebra on zebra. And remember, zebras are a long vertical spread with a long uh, option uh, along along with it. So I'm going to go to the trade tab, or excuse me, the analyze tab here for ZBRA. We're going to take a look at that at that trade. So we remember we looked at this losing faster than it gains, but it's now in that gaining position. We've got uh, now uh, expiration is 17 May, so we've got a little bit of time to go. The stock in this particular case, let's double check the chart. The stock is continuing to move to the upside. So we're gonna leave this trade in place, this zebra trade to see if in fact it continues to gain value for us. So we may get this, down to around that 45, 30 to 45 days to go until expiration and look at taking that trade off because at that point, it may be more beneficial to close this trade down, look for another opportunity to put a zebra trade on. So we'll talk about that as we continue to manage these trades. So just a quick reminder of what we've done. We've looked at managing a number of trades today uh, in our uh, long verticals and diagonals discussion. Uh, Abercrombie & Fitch, uh, MSTR, CELH, we're still waiting on that IBM double diagonal roll of the insides of the short legs. We'll see if that works in our favor. Guys, uh, sometimes you just have to do a little bit of spring cleaning. And so that's what uh, we, we get to here. If you want to continue to uh, learn more, great place to do that is right here on at Trader Talks webcast. Just search for your topic and and you're going to find a number of webcasts that talk about those particular ideas guys thanks for joining and participating and being a part of this discussion we talked about long vertical and diagonal strategies we looked at managing those trades talking about the impact of price time and volatility and we uh, placed some example trades my thanks to ken rose today for helping out and answering those questions thanks to all of you look forward to seeing you again here next week take care everybody have a great day. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.